Welcome to graduation. We are so glad you're here. Yeah, let's woo. What I'm a little confused about is I'm always worried that I'm going to be in the wrong outfit. I was positive for graduation. I was supposed to wear my regalia today. I see one mortar board out there. Two, three. Look at this table with their mortar boards. Thank you so very much for wearing your mortar boards today because I and feeling a bit um, improperly dressed for this occasion at the moment. So, well, welcome to Collaboration College graduation and the community celebration. I'm Charlotte Long. I serve as the Dean of the College of Professional Studies and am a grateful collaborator in this year-long project called Collaboration College. We are so delighted that you would join us today for graduation as we can celebrate the accomplishments each of these groups um, have achieved over this past year. And uh, so we invite you to uh, really fully participate in graduation, even if you don't have the regalia. It's very hot in this regalia, I should let you know. So you should be grateful that you don't. Um, but we uh, wanted to open uh, with a prayer this, uh, this afternoon and then get started on our lunch and then on with the conferring of our certificates today. Matt McCall, you all know, if you've been in Collaboration College, has been uh, the person behind the scenes making everything happen. And if you could join me in thanking Matt as he comes to lead our prayer. Thank you, Charlotte. Will you bow with me? Father in heaven, thank you for this day. You are the sustainer of all life, and we thank you for your provision. Lord, we thank you for the opportunity to come together today and celebrate these teams who are impacting Middle Tennessee in amazing ways. And we ask that you bless their efforts as they serve others by working together. Please provide your comforting presence as each team anticipates their final presentation tomorrow. We know that the work they do is much larger than one 15-minute presentation. However, we humbly ask for your provision for each of them. We thank you for this great city and are humbled by your grace and your mercy. In his name, amen. Well, as we get ready to uh, start our official program, Joy Baxter, one of our piano performance majors, um, has been playing during lunch today. Thank you very much for that. We um, have prepared a uh, special video to um, kind of highlight your journey of this past year and Linda Peekshat and Kim and her whole, their whole team have uh, done an outstanding job on this video. We hope you will enjoy taking a look at the journey. Nashville leaders have long known the power of collaboration, knowing it can generate more opportunities to help even more people in our community. Now, a year-long college is giving nonprofits the direction, resources, and encouragement to collaborate successfully. It's called Collaboration College, appropriately itself a collaboration between Hospital Corporation of America, Lipscomb University, and the Center for Nonprofit Management. It's the first of its kind in the nation, a unique combination of for-profit business, educational, and nonprofit leaders. The $25,000 collaboration prize offered by the HCA Foundation was the catalyst, the catalyst for models that work, models that can be replicated in any community. It was in fact a college, four classes over one year, beginning with more than 150 nonprofit leaders learning about collaboration in September 2011. 72 returned two months later with proposed partners to explore modes of collaboration. By early 2012, six teams consisting of 21 nonprofits were selected to compete for the prize. For the rest of the year, they worked from a common vision and learned to trust each other and the collaborative process. These teams have been challenged to change their way of thinking, try new approaches, and take a different perspective to better serve their community. Lipscomb University provided superb academic resources and leadership. 
North Highland, C3 Consulting, and HCA donated 150 hours of consulting and another 200 hours from the Center for Nonprofit Management, all worth $110,000. And the potential with which they saw their own success had matured significantly over time and their language changed, the sophistication with which they were able to problem solve changed, the degree to which they were able to uh, not only identify solutions out of the problem solving, but name and articulate them for others to be able to conceptualize brought a much greater group of folks into the project. And so I recruited members from each one of those organizations to help out and we created a collaboration model um, to say from a consulting perspective how can we provide pro bono consulting services to the uh, organizations uh, that were participating in Collaboration College. And collaboration College yeah, I think is incredibly successful because it brings people of diverse backgrounds into the room, gives them the skill sets to have the discussions uh, they don't normally have and I think it's important that Collaboration College continue to take on the challenging um, the challenging issues of our day and continues to uh, give people the skills to manage those issues. Collaboration College worked for Nashville and Middle Tennessee in many ways. Businesses gave back to the community. An educational institution took a broader role of leadership and support, and nonprofits learned to share power, influence, and resources to accomplish more. And when they accomplish more, our community benefits. The graduates of the first Collaboration College represent six compelling models for making our community a better place to live. All six teams are well on their way to transforming our community through their commitment to collaboration. Only one will win the prize, but they are all deserving. The prize was the catalyst, but the people they serve are their passion. for that uh, effort to try to give you a little picture of what Collaboration College is in a five minute video. Now, we wanted you to have a, a little bit, this is kind of, the title of this is kind of the journey of collaboration, and especially our graduates here in the room know that when we gathered here last September, um, there's been quite a bit of work that's done since then. So I want to tell you a little bit about the milestones on that journey to help you better understand what Collaboration College is all about. So really our goal here is that this would be a benefit on multiple levels. One for the nonprofit organizations. The second level is for the community good to learn, practice, and be supported. The, and this is part of that support here today. And so at this point I really want to thank the mayor and Laurel Creech for being here because your being here helps these agencies that have worked so hard feel that support from the community. So thank you so very much. <laughs> also here to support the agencies are other special guests and included in that is other foundation leaders here today. So as we've gone on this journey, my colleagues at other foundations uh, have asked, you know, what is that? And so we wanted to demystify that a little bit more for that group today. So thank you all so much for coming as well. And obviously my third thank you at that support has been all the fellow, and I will define it as collaborators. And that has grown over the course even of Collaboration College. It did start with Lipscomb and CNM and HCA, but it grew to include North Highland and C3 and the Strategic Resource Group of HCA, and SALT, and others. And you'll hear a little bit more about that as I go, go forward. We wanted it to be rigorous and challenging. And so there were a few times in the journey that people said, really, you're expecting them to do that? And we said, yeah, really. We think that the nonprofits working together can kind of go to that next level of business analysis and rigor that we sometimes use at our own company. Now critical to that was the, was the C3 North Highland and HCA. And I'm looking at Helen because we've sat in the room together and she said, well, how do I, what about this? 
as a model? Or what about this for a format for them to give us information? So thank you, Helen. That rigor, I think, is what makes this special. And then finally, a model of collaboration. So because we have so many fellow collaborators, we have had to learn to work together, to share power, to make decisions collaboratively. And so we've tried to model that and hope you will see that reflected here today. So we started in 101 and it was just like when Charlotte came into the room today in her graduation regalia. It was a lot of energy in the room and she started and I felt like I was back in college. I was there. And then we talked a little bit about, you know, collaboration is hard work. And we had some real candid conversations. And Pete shared that he's been trying to help agencies collaborate for a few years, right? <laughs> Just a few years. And so we talked about how challenging it is sometimes. And then we looked at other models across the country. And there is a national collaboration prize from Texas. And they came and told us about their process and their winner. And then we decided we needed to kind of dig into what really is collaboration. You saw them in the video, but there are six models of collaboration that include everything from a vertically or partially integrated merger on one end, to maybe some back office operations, to maybe some joint programming. And we wanted to dig into what are the components of success for each one of those models. So that was 101. What are the models? And we had over 150 individuals representing about 100 organizations on that day. So then we came back in October and dug a little deeper and said, well, what are the skill sets you need to be successful at collaboration? And we had everything from discovery and visioning, and Linda again led that, led that part of the course, I'll call it the course, and at the end of the day, we had Steve Joyner help us with conflict resolution. Because how many of you have tried to work with other organizations and have had just a little bit of disagreement? Anybody? I'm the only one? So it's natural part of the process, but if you have the skills to work with it, you can overcome that. And then those groups uh, decided kind of who their partners would be and submitted proposals January of this year. So then came what we call our independent study period. And this is where the benefit of the consulting groups came into big play. We had six teams advance at that point. And once again, Lipscomb hosted a milestone celebration with all the partners and teams. We introduced the framework. We introduced what that course of study would look like over the summer. A few of the teams actually got SALT students to help them. And then came what I call, what put it on steroids, 450 hours of consulting. Um, and that was from both CNM, huge consulting services from CNM, and those are subject matter experts in everything from finance to strategic planning, but also project and uh, planning and capstone project presentation from C3, North Highland, and HCA SRG. So this gave the teams, we hope, kind of that extra oomph to take it to the next level and to look at their proposals from a different perspective. So these are the teams you're gonna happily, you're gonna hear from them today because each one of them is gonna give you about a 30,000 foot view of their collaboration. So I won't go into that in detail as you'll meet them. And this just gives you a feel for kind of the workload. Uh, they began very earnestly working on this. They met regularly. They met with their consultants. They came back and checked with us a couple times. They had two uh, mock sessions where they did their presentations in advance of final presentations tomorrow. So there just was a great deal of rigor and practice and work that, that went into this. So I don't know how it compares to an online college course, um, but it's a significant amount of effort and we wanna, we wanna recognize that today. And then the last part is today and tomorrow and then a celebration. Because every collaboration really you have to celebrate during the process and definitely at the end. And so those final presentations include that description of the model, some milestones, impact, budget, and timelines. And that's going to be made to judging panels tomorrow, September 14th. And then we'll all gather back at CNM Salute to Excellence, what I call the Academy Awards of Nonprofits in Nashville. 
and have awarded the $25,000 prize on October 11th. So that's just a high level of the journey that these graduates have taken. And I am especially gratified because I know that every nonprofit represented here works tirelessly every day to serve individuals in Nashville. And they had to find that extra time and extra effort to put into this. And so as a community, we are very, very grateful. As a foundation leader, I just appreciate what you all have done to be the first class of Collaboration College. So there's a little bit of the background. Well, good afternoon all, and welcome to Lipscomb, and welcome to this particular moment. I got home from a funeral last night about 10 o'clock, and there was a stack of certificates. Uh, and a little note that said, you must sign these before tomorrow morning. And uh, so I signed away, uh, and then this morning tried to figure out what it was all about. And uh, I haven't learned as much as you have experienced, uh, but I have learned enough this morning to recognize uh, that this is a significant moment in several ways. It's significant in the sense that it took a level of collaboration to put on the Collaboration College. Isn't that fascinating? Now, it's not unusual maybe that uh, the Center for Nonprofit Management uh, and HCA and Lipscomb got together. It's extremely significant that three parts of Lipscomb internally got together. <laughs> and uh, we actually had faculty from three different areas uh, who came together, uh, the, the Center uh, centers as we think about civic leadership and law, justice, and society, and uh, SALT, uh, and they actually collaborated to then collaborate. What a wonderful moment. In my background in conflict management, we've talked about collaboration for 25 years, and it's so easy to talk about, and am I right, that it's much more difficult to do. And as you really roll up your sleeves and say, we're going to understand uh, the interests that we bring to the table, and we're going to be creative enough to reflect those interests in what we then do, well, that's hard, hard work. And we congratulate you who have been diligent about that uh, this entire year and uh, the work that you have done. When I came to Nashville, I realized very, very quickly what a wonderfully generous this community was. What a generous community in the sense of looking around and, and almost everybody I ran into had started their own nonprofit. Uh, and uh, that was reflective of their generosity. It also seemed to be somewhat chaotic. And, uh, you know, once you create your own nonprofit, then you get kind of passionate about your own nonprofit. And uh, all of a sudden, as we reach out in the community, uh, everybody else's nonprofit can do something else, but mine's going to survive. And it does change a bit, and so it makes so very, very relevant uh, your thinking in this very, very profound way. Well, I'm supposed to give you the academic charge. I frankly don't know what that is. Uh, but I will tell you two things. Uh, I will tell you that in the college setting, there are magic words. Uh, and in just a few moments, you're going to get a certificate. Uh, and if this was like a complete graduation, uh, I would say on behalf of the Board of Trustees, and the recommendation of the faculty, we now award you this certificate with all the rights, duties, and privileges thereto appertaining. That's what I would say if it was a real graduation, uh, but this isn't exactly a real graduation, but it's close enough. Uh, and so I will say, on behalf of the Board of Trustees and upon the recommendation <laughs> of the faculty, we give you this certificate, certificate with all the rights, duties, and privileges thereto appertaining, and pause a little bit when we think about the duties, because it's not over. Uh, it's not over in the presentations you'll do tomorrow. It's not over in now what has begun in your thinking. It's not over in the potential that you see. The duties part of that, I hope, lingers just a little bit, because you have the potential to have a profound impact. The other thing I would say to graduates is that you came as our consumers and you leave as our product. Yeah, that's not exactly right here. I don't think you paid normal tuition to participate. <laughs> uh, so you didn't exactly come as a consumer, but you do leave at least with uh, Lipscomb's blessing, if nothing else. Uh, and uh, about every 90 days, we'll solicit you for the alumni fund. So uh, uh, that, that 
that's a wonderful <laughs> honor that you, you will now get. Uh, see, we'll, we'll count you as a bison even if you never got in the pen. Uh, so uh, we, we, uh, we do welcome you and think that you are a little bit a part of our community. Well, I'll close with this. A uh, phrase we've used for seven years here, but I think applies again. Uh, written by a business author, a Christian business author, who said simply, you can't be who you need to be if you remain where you are. Now, that's not all that hard to understand. You can't be who you need to be if you remain where you are. We generally talk about that in terms of this institution and all the change we've gone through. I just announced to our faculty and staff that our budget this year is $70 million more than it was five years ago. Uh, we are getting close to having doubled the size of the institution during the most economically challenging time in our history. Uh, and I say, you can't be, as an institution, who you need to be if you remain where you are. We say that to our students who have come from all over the country and all over the world to study here. They had to leave something to come be who they can be. And I share that with you. You now have some insight. You now have a sense. You now have a sense of vision, uh, and, and you as organizations uh, cannot be who you need to be if you remain where you are. Take with you the ideas and the energy, the inspiration and the challenge of this moment, uh, and become all that you can be, and we in Nashville will be the very humbled and blessed recipients of that. May God bless you on your journey. So I've been given the assignment of following a university president who's also a preacher um, and, uh, and preceding a mayor who does this all day long and has already been reelected. So, uh, so I think the only thing for me to do is be very short. So I'll be, I'll be very short. Um, I, I have a number of people to thank, and I, and I need to thank uh, Dr. Lowry while you're here, your Lipscomb, Lipscomb team, which is just fantastic. Uh, they can turn miracles. Uh, they, they can do it in 48 hours, most recently. Um, and they just do a wonderful job. And so we always enjoy coming here. Um, I ran into Randy at some event uh, a little while ago, and, and, uh, and he, he just walked up to me and said, how many collaborations have we got going now? And uh, that's how we feel about Lipscomb. So it's wonderful. Uh, your folks are just fantastic. Um, Mayor, I want to thank you for coming um, and for uh, supporting the nonprofit sector. Uh, Joanne for leading the whole effort. Um, and all of the agencies who put up with all of us for about a year. So thank you to everybody for that. Um, so back to my being very short. Uh, my wife teaches at the University School of Nashville. Um, and like most independent schools, uh, they spend a lot of time examining their role. Last year, she was asked to serve on a committee that was looking at community uh, collaborations. Uh, the committee chair was new at this. And at the first meeting, she exclaimed in exasperation, well, I don't know of anyone who wakes up in the morning thinking, who can I collaborate with today? <laughs> so my wife sheepishly said, well, my husband does. <laughs> um, and I ended up going and speaking to the committee. Uh, but I understand where she was coming from. Uh, collaboration doesn't come naturally. Uh, and that may explain why the hundreds of nonprofits in Middle Tennessee, Randy, uh, don't do it as much as we would like. Uh, but there's great power in the concept of collaboration. And when it works, it can really make a difference in the community. It can eliminate duplication, streamline service delivery, and reduce costs. Twelve urban early education centers uh, are learning that, thanks to Ellen and the number of people that they're working with. Conexion Americas is pursuing that with a new headquarters shortly. And we see it in, in now our trolley barns as we create a new idea with Hands On Nashville just about every day. So I want to congratulate the agencies assembled here today. They've worked hard for many months. They've listened to all kinds of advice from all kinds of advisors from three different sectors. And they've learned and they've created new ways to operate and new models to operate. I hope they'll all have an opportunity to receive support from our donor community. I'm looking over that right now. And, um, their models, we know, can change the way we deliver services in Nashville and serve as examples to others around the country. Thanks to all of you for what you do every day. Mayor. Well, thank you.
you, Lewis, and thank you all for uh, inviting me to be here today. This is really an impressive uh, collection of nonprofit executives, uh, businesses, and the fine institution of Lipscomb University, and I am honored to be here. And Randy, I am very impressed by the growth in five years. That's fantastic. I mean, I, I talk a lot about different things going on in the city, and if you ask me to, to rattle off, which I can do, um, some of the th <laughs> things that make Nashville such a great city, one of them is universities. And, you know, Lipscomb has absolutely been extraordinary for the last five, six years under Randy's leadership and has become, <laughs> you know, very much of a, a national university, but um, also just really good citizens in Nashville. I mean, really good citizens in Nashville who are always there to help when there's an issue that's important to the city as a government, but also to the city as, as those who are involved in nonprofits or those who are involved in, in, in a personal way in moving our city forward. So thank you. Today's celebration exemplifies um, the ingredient that I firmly believe makes a community strong, which is collaboration. I know the power of collaboration well um, by connecting the expertise, assets, and passions of different agencies, so much more can be accomplished. And it's important to also emphasize the fact that uh, collaboration is a key part of doing things more efficiently and more uh, cost effectively. Um, we have actually stressed uh, collaborative efforts during the time that I've been mayor, and one of the reasons is during this tough economy, you were not going to get much done unless you brought in the private sector or nonprofits to work with the government. Uh, it, it's pretty clear that you just can't do it on your own. And an example I'd give of this, uh, and it's an appropriate example today given ACA's uh, sponsorship of this, uh, of this uh, um, organization, is the new Lentz Public Health Center. You know, when I came into office, we, it was pretty clear we needed a new health center. We had the Lentz Health Center, which is basically on the Centennial HCA campus by the Centennial Park, which is an older building and had, um, as all older buildings owned by the government, seemed to have tremendous asbestos issues and everything else. And all those things needed to, to be addressed. And we went through a process uh, that identified the cost of, of redoing the building. And then we entered into discussions um, with HCA <laughs> to form a public-private partnership where essentially um, HCA is in the process now of building us a brand new state-of-the-art um, a center, a public health center on Charlotte Avenue. Uh, we did a land swap, we did a swap about how the actual building would be built, and it's a win-win situation for both, both organizations. And I think that is the way we need to be thinking increasingly, and I thank HCA for their willingness uh, to think outside the box. But that's just one of several examples of uh, collaborations that have produced successful results for Metro and the community. And I feel confident that over the course of the, of the past year, each of you have learned how the impact can be much greater with partnerships and collaborations. And with all that hard work, it has paid off because today you're here as the inaugural graduating class of the uh, Collaborative College. So congratulations uh, to each of you. Each of you have proven your dedication to help uh, build a stronger community by participating and succeeding in this program. I hope that the future outcome of this education uh, and experience will reap tremendous benefits for you, your partners, and this great city. Uh, thank you for having me here today and uh, for this moment to help celebrate this momentous occasion with you. Thank you. I'm Linda Peek Schacht, the Executive Director of the uh, Nelson and Sue Andrews Institute for Civic Leadership here, and one of three parts of the Lipscomb Collaborative, President Lowry, who uh, played a part in Collaboration College. It's my pleasure today to introduce to you the, th the uh, teens and the person that they've chosen to present a very reduced version of their presentation that they'll be giving to the judges tomorrow. But first, if you'll allow me, 
we offer one of only two masters in civic leaders, uh, leadership in the country, and I would be remiss if I didn't acknowledge that one of our first graduates graduating this December is with us today as one of the teams, Abby Sasser. Abby, we're very proud of you. <laughs> and so a warning to all of you who are presenting. Kim Carpenter Drake has, is in the back with uh, one, two, and stop signs. <laughs> we will ask you to please honor what she is holding up when she said stop. Otherwise, you will be getting demerits from us from, from collaboration. <laughs> we want to hear from you. And so first, and I understand we've had a little change in the order here, First, Roger Dinwiddie will come and talk about the Youth Opportunity Center Shared Services collaboration. Thank you very much. I uh, appreciate the opportunity to share. Are there slides with this? There we go. Okay, great. Um, this has been a great opportunity, and I just want to first of all say what a great team we've had in terms of our development process over these last months. When we started this, we thought we knew a lot. And uh, we thought we had things figured out at the Youth Opportunity Center about how to do shared services. But at the end of the day, what we found through this process, there was a lot of work to do. And this has been the benefit to our team, is to really put together a great process uh, that we feel positive about going forward. I hope this works. Great. Uh, Oasis and STARS began sharing services in 2009 as we moved into the Youth Opportunity Center together. And what we found, uh, th we wanted to make sure that we attacked a need in the community, and this is sort of a why of what we've chosen to do. There is a huge need in community, as you all know, for shared financial HR services for not-for-profits and good sound management of those issues. We are all, as not-for-profit leaders, searching for better ways and more effective ways to do what we do and to reduce costs. And that was the nature of our start process to try to put together and bring together more positively what we had already begun to really create that for other not-for-profits in the community. So we developed a strategy that we've called three things, create, share, and teach, and that's our model for what we're doing right now. The create model is, so this is the what of what we're doing, and that is really to offer in our services to other not-for-profits in the community uh, first of all, creating the depth of our collaborative back office function so that we can then share that with other not-for-profits in the community to help them be more effective in what they do back office. And then finally, which will also include, by the way, in the share component, an opportunity to actually provide direct services for other not-for-profits in that particular arena of finance and HR. We know that we will realize about 17% savings in what we do. When we start off, STARS and Oasis in providing these services to other not-for-profits, and we know also that other not-for-profits who participate in our model will also find reduced costs in their HR and finance services as well. And then the next part, and the last part, is what we really want to do in community. And that is to create, share, stop! I didn't get what I wanted, okay? Well, we're going to create, share, and model, and teach. That's what we're going to do. So we're going to do it well, too. Thank you for stopping, and thank you for that great presentation. Next, Joyce Lavery from Choosing a Better Future. Thank you so much. It was a great opportunity. Roger is correct. So my esteemed colleagues and, and leaders in the community, thank you for this opportunity. We learned a lot. Empower is about a program collaboration between Safe Haven Family Shelter and Nashville OIC. Together, we're presenting a model of workforce development to help our joint clients obtain better jobs. And not only that, also a career path. We know unemployment's a problem. We know that you can't get someone out of homelessness and poverty without creating both job opportunities and providing job training. We know that Nashville is among the fastest growing economies in the nation, but it does lack a skill, skilled entry-level workforce. We know the investment in providing our clients the skills they need to succeed is both long-term and also the needs of employers. It's not a simple task, but a necessary one if we're serious about ending homelessness for families, and helping impoverished families get out of poverty. 
We know that with a combined experience of over 75 years, our collaboration in power is the story of two small but very proven organizations that can join forces to have a huge impact on our clients by meeting their complex needs for case management, housing, and also ongoing job skills and development. <coughs> In fact, we already share several clients. One, I think, prepared your lunch today. This was his dream job, and he was one of our first clients that inspired this collaboration, so we'll thank him later on today. But what we have is already a record of outcomes, but with our collaboration, we also have a model that serves a population that has gotten forgotten about those who are in poverty and an opportunity for our clients to choose that better future together. Thank you so much. Renata Soto, Collaborate for Family Support. Come on down. <laughs> We are the collaboration for family support, the opportunity that we sat that brought us together at the table. As our name indicates, it's to better support families who are isolated due to issues of health, poverty, culture, and geography. The solution that we brought to the table at the beginning was related to mental health issues. Conexión Americas needed financial, I'm sorry, mental health counselors at our new community center in South Nashville. Martha Bryan Center needed the same in East Nashville. And nurses for newborn needed that home visiting mental counseling available to the families that they serve. So we all gathered around the table of family and children's service and requested and pledged for this amazing resource that they could offer to each of us. But we didn't start there. We started with the counselors being based at our community centers and share staffing at those locations. But we saw that there were much more greater opportunity for us to share uh, our strengths and what each of us could teach to each other. And that means that we're also operating under a model of sharing how we do things and challenge each other of why we have done it the way that we have. We are sharing training across agencies and most importantly we're sharing our unique strengths with each other. What that means is, for example, Family Children's Service will help us all understand the importance of trauma like domestic violence in all the interactions of the families that we serve in the different dimensions that we touch their lives. Nurses for Newborns is also helping us understand the importance of early parenting and make sure that every child has the best opportunities from the day they're born. Martha Bryan Center, an all nonprofit organization with more than 100 years of experience in our community, is helping us all define and really deepen our understanding of what it means to be family-centered and to make sure that we engage families and we engage their heritage, their assets, and their self-strengthening capacities. And Conexión Americas brings to our partners the understanding of working with our newest neighbors and being both a service provider and an advocacy organization. Our impact through this process, we hope to improve services. We are going to increase our capacities individually and collectively. We are decreasing costs by doing this together. We are developing a replicable model that anybody else can do. And we are, above all, making stronger families. At the end of the day, when the, we're not in the microphone and we don't have this very distinguished audience, and we are not competing for a prize, although we think we're going to get it, <laughs> um, sorry, I went too far. The quote that we have here really is what brings us to the table. And it is, if you want to go quickly, go alone. If you want to go far, go together. We are Nashville um, Nurses for Newborns, Family and Children's Service, Martha Bryan Center, and Conexion Americas. And together with our families, we are going very far. Rhonda Switzer, Collaboration for Data-Driven Community Solutions. Four of our nation's very best health care charities are right here in Middle Tennessee. Last year, Faith Family Medical Clinic, Salome Family Health Center, Mercy Children's Clinic, and Interfaith Dental Clinic combined to provide over 65,000 patient encounters for the uninsured. 
You have all heard the stories of our patients, some of you many times. Stories of how our whole person care, delivered with not only compassion but also excellence, have profoundly impacted and improved lives. But we need more than patient stories to prove objectively that we are moving the needle. Our collaborative project will add facts to these feelings. Through combining the data of our four clinics, we'll gain a significant sample size, which can then be used to make valid comparisons between our outcomes regarding chronic care, management, prevention, and wellness, and benchmarks for underserved populations. Basically, we will aggregate, exchange, analyze, and present the results. The product will be objective, factual stories that will be used to create a unified marketing approach. None of us could have done this alone. It can only be done through collaboration. This is groundbreaking work for our community. The impact is going to be huge. Our patients are going to understand the value of whole person care management versus reactive acute care. Our stakeholders are going to have facts to justify stronger support, ensuring long-term sustainability of those programs that work. Hospitals will receive information showing whole person care reduces uncompensated hospital admissions and ER visits. And nonprofits across the country will have a model that we have fully developed and that they can replicate. Feelings plus facts is the big picture. Pamela Sessions from Direct Connect, and can I ask Tom Starling from Building Behavioral Health Bridges to come on down and be ready to be our last presenter. For those of you that don't know, the YWCA is the largest and most comprehensive provider of domestic violence services in the state of Tennessee. We are truly honored to be in this collaboration with our partners. They are the Center for Refugees and Immigrants of Tennessee, who provide social and employment, social employment and educational services to immigrants and refugees. Our other partner is the Nashville International Center for Empowerment. They provide social services and educational support for immigrants and refugees that are settling in Tennessee. Together, they serve representatives and people from more than 43 countries. Our final collaborating partner is Bridges, and Bridges is a premier provider of interpreting, educational, and supportive services for the deaf and hard of hearing communities here in our area. Also working on us with this project was a, a representative from the Masters in Civic Leadership at Lipscomb University, as stated earlier. One in three immigrant, refugee, and deaf women will be victims of domestic violence in their lifetime. Our goal, is to raise a, our goal is to raise awareness among those specific populations about domestic violence. Our opportunity here is for us to our opportunity here is for, for us to eliminate the cultural and language barriers that exist that prevent these victims from accessing services. We have created a very replicable model. Where, that allows us to go into these specific communities using various venues such as health fairs, apartment complex meetings, uh, teas, and by developing relationships with their own community leaders known as the Yoda and the Yento of the community, we will use these venues to educate immigrants, refugees, and deaf clients and break down the barriers that, pre that prevent them from getting the services that they need in relation to domestic violence. Thank you. Let me ask you, what do you think of when you hear behavioral health? Do you think of Alzheimer's? Do you think of returning soldiers with PTSD? Do you think of a kid that's bullied or suicide? Do you think of people incarcerated with substance abuse issues? Or perhaps where to get help, families torn apart, where are you going to find a licensed professional to meet your needs? Fortunately, our collaboration creates a one-stop shop where all these populations can be served. Individually, we're unique. 
but together we're complete. Who's doing this? It's Mental Health America. It's the Tennessee Licensed Professional Counselors Association, and it's the Drug Court Foundation of Davidson County and the Davidson County Mental Health Court. So we're very excited to be coming together. You know, we were very selfish at first. We were thinking, how can this help my agency? How are we contributing to this fragmented system of behavioral health? How is it that we have these limited resources, limited funding, and overlapping services? And it wasn't until we got together and started focusing on our mission that we created No Wrong Door, where everybody could be served. We are the only uh, collaboration in, uh, amongst these teams that provide a full merger, which we're very happy about. One other institution is now sharing a permanent, uh, a permanent address with another agency, which is also very exciting, to be able to share mail, share back office services, sharing an address, creating no wrong door. We've already applied for over a million dollars worth of funding, and some of that has been realized. We're now decreasing infant mortality rates in the 37208 zip code because we're all working together, something we could never have done together, and more is to come. Thank you. honor of calling out the names for conferring our certificates, but I, as I was in the back with my numbers dancing, I realized that I got to reveal two things about me to you today. One is that I'm incredibly bossy, and I'm perfectly happy to stand back up there and tell you when to stop talking, and the other is that I have reached the age where I have to put these on to read your names. So, um, so if you could keep that in this room, I'd be thankful. Um, as I call out your name, what we're going to do is start with the name of your team. And if all of the team members will come up, I'll ask you to come across the stage as we say your individual name. And then we're going to do a team photo with all the team members and their advisors and consultants over there on the beautiful purple suede bench. So if you can come along this way and then along this, that will keep us moving. So. Um, I think that Matt and Joanne are going to help to distribute those. So the first group is Direct Connect. Oh, look at that! Charlotte, I feel underdressed. I need your regalia. Yeah, crank it up. All right, so our Direct Connect group is coming up. If you'll join me right over here. That's right. That's right. Did we get kitschy? I don't know. I'm just asking. Um, the first person is Susan French. You will meet Joanne and Matt on that side. Patricia Shea. That's you. Sally. Sally Hussey. Yusuf Asa. Denise Kaufman. Sue Lowe. Marielle Lavecchio. Abby Sasser, you have to come back and get yours. Pamela Sessions. <laughs> and Gutala Fetch. Great. Our second team is Choosing a Better Future. If you all will come up. Renee Bob, Helena Farrow, Ruby Hawkins, Joyce Lavery, and Jennifer Reason. That's the team for choosing a better future. <laughs> Youth Opportunity Center Shared Services. Hey, I'm hustling. We're moving. Roger Dinwiddie, Shanda Hampton, Kim Reese, Tom Ward, Cynthia Whetstone, Teresa Whitaker. That's the team for Youth Opportunity Center Shared Services.
The next group is Collaboration for Data-Driven Community Solutions. Who are dressed appropriately for the occasion. <laughs> Laura Hobson. Fred Holliday. Joshua Southard, Rhonda Switzer, Nancy West, and David Winningham. Collaboration for Data Driven Community Solutions. Collaboration for Family Support. Now that's a photo op right there. <laughs> Vicki Beaver. Lucretia Dangerfield. Christine Jackson. Tara Lentz. Renata Soto. know you're coming up, right? Yeah. Uh, building Behavioral Health Bridges. <laughs> Deborah Fish, Roland Gray, Shondell Miller, Kimberly Speakman, Tom Starling, and Jerry Thomas. That's Building Behavioral Health Bridges. And congratulations to all of our certificate holders on doing a fantastic job and putting a tremendous amount of work into this process. represents and the reason we wanted to do pictures is is collaboration is really more about people working together even more than organizations working together and so these teams have grown in their um, ability to work together knowledge of each other because they've spent a lot of time together and so we wanted to kind of mark both the individual achievement and the team achievement today what a, what a great celebration, and I'm going to tell you that I'm going to keep myself to the same rigor we kept the teams. We promised you would be out by one, and you will. Um, I am so grateful for the many contributions from the collaborators and colleagues that supported this year-long initiatives. And it really is about the people. Um, it really is about people putting your self-interest a little bit aside and working on that greater community good or that greater interest. Um, I'm especially grateful to the HCA board for supporting this initiative and I have representatives here today both Pete Bird and Cheryl Reed are here and serve on the board and the board kind of took a risk on this one which we hadn't done it before we weren't sure how it was going to turn out we felt like it was going to be a great thing but it's good to have a little innovation um, and so we're pleased with that opportunity but really the instructional designers and and Lipscomb, as always, did a fabulous job with kind of telling the story of all the people involved with Collaboration College. So I just call your attention to that. I'm not going to go through all those names, but I do need to say a special thanks to my fellow, we called them instructional designers. And that would be Lewis from CNM with his expertise in so many areas. Kim, who really worked with the consultants and made sure that the teams had the resources from a consulting that they needed. Linda, 
who you saw the incredible result of her work, but that's only just a snippet of what she can do in terms of helping a group understand their collaborative vision. Um, my partner at the HCA Foundation for over 13 years now, Lois Abrams, who never fails to both challenge me and make what we try to do better. Um, Matt, of course. Uh, Matt, you've been the glue that's kept this together. We wish you such, Matt is moving on to other things and um, he has just been part of Collaboration College and we're really grateful. And absolutely, sh our professor, Sharla, who I'm gonna give a round to because she, <laughs> she set the tone on the very first day of class and has continued to have energy and spirit and guidance that has really benefited all of us. I also want to thank those leaders from C3 North Highland and HCA SRG that helped us to make good ideas for the last part of the project better and contributed that intellectual capital that challenges all of us. A final thank you to all the distinguished lecturers who you'll see on here, consultants and advisors who coached and supported the teams in their works. But most importantly, those of you who received certificates today and chose to be on the journey with us as graduates. Also the board members, because without your support, collaboration doesn't happen. And that's one thing at the foundation we believe really strongly. So thank you for taking time out of your work day to be with us. While we know that only one team will be awarded the prize to jumpstart their collaboration at Salute, every team is a winner in our eyes because they have a new vision, a new plan for working together, hopefully a little bit of passion, and that will benefit both your organizations and our community for years to come. Thanks to all of you who came to celebrate with us today. Have a great afternoon and see you October 11th? Night. Glad I checked. At Salute. <laughs> yeah.